I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Teresa Burke, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the San Juan Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So tell us about yourself. Tell us uh, where you teach and tell us what you teach. Last year I taught uh, fifth grade at Howe Avenue Elementary School in San Juan and next year I'm moving to seventh grade at Lycan K-8. So tell us about that transition and what that's going to be like. It's a new challenge and I'm looking forward to it. I've wanted to uh, take on the older kids for a while. I like that age group. I like their enthusiasm and their, their questioning. And so it's time and I, I think it's going to be wonderful. So what are some of the special things you have to do to, for that transition? You, you know, the older students, different curriculum? Right. I think a lot of what I do in terms of balanced literacy, in terms of breaking apart a reading uh, block of time into units of study, into different components involving uh, shared reading, guided reading, that part will be the same. The novel studies and the text that we select will be different. The challenges there, I think, will be the same. And I'm looking forward to working still at a title school and working with students who, some of whom are still learning English and students who are looking to really grow in terms of their literacy development. So that I don't feel will be a major transition. The history standards for seventh grade are new to me and I'm gonna have a little work cut out for me. Do you think that'll be your biggest challenge? Probably, yeah, but it's a, a historical time period that I've always been um, terrifically interested in personally. So I feel like I have a great deal of background knowledge already and so hopefully that will be easy. So those are the specific challenges you're going to face, but what about overall as, you know, in your careers in teaching? What are some of the challenge, challenges that you've faced as a teacher, and what do you think maybe overall, what are some of the big challenges in education today? I think learning is really the, the challenge because the world is changing so rapidly, and we're moving beyond the, the information age into the di digital age, and it's really transforming education. and. You look at just five years ago, we didn't have iPads, and now we're using iPads in the classroom. So the transformation in education in terms of technology and learning that and keeping pace with that is the biggest challenge, but it's also the greatest fun. I'm just thoroughly enjoying everything that we're doing with technology. What are some of the things you've done to incorporate a lot of technology in your classroom? I try to fully integrate it into every content area across the curriculum. and whether it's making movies to demonstrate a math concept that the kids are doing, not me, although I've done some of that too, whether it's using an app on the iPad called Explain Everything where they have to document their thinking and then share it with the class, or whether it's using our learning management system, Schoology, to assign work to students in, in leveled groups or in skill groups and have them respond to that assignment online, whether it's reading, whether it's writing, whether it's uh, co-collaborating on a Google Doc and then uploading it to Schoology. All of that is uh, my focus, my, my effort, my work, and, and I'm getting better at it. I'm not going to say I'm perfect, but it's been a wonderful transition the year, the last two years, and I'm really looking forward to what I can do with it next year. How difficult is it to keep up with the changing technology? It's hard, yeah. but it's, it's so fun. It, if you're a learner, if you love learning, it's so exciting to see what's coming. And the change in, in technology right now is so rapid. I mean, think of the power of what we can do with just a cell phone. And the fact that apps now have taken over from uh, the World Wide Web, they completely dominate. So, uh, you know, I remember the old flip camera, that's completely gone now. We've gone from analog to digital completely, you know. So many things have taken place. Netflix have wiped out Blockbuster and all of it's changing and it's an interesting time. It's a wonderful time in education and to be able to bring that in and be so relevant to our kids and the world that they're growing up in. I, I got to listen to um, Ken Shelton talk and he was talking about how we're not either digital immigrants or digital natives the way so many people have painted it. We're sort of all digital migrants because we're all doing it and learning together and it's a really exciting time. And the students learn quickly. They do. And you know, people of a certain age, uh, experienced teachers, pe teachers who have been around for a while who didn't have that technology right out of the right out of college are really, you know, you know not I don't want to say struggling to keep up, but really it's a challenge to keep up. It it's true, but it's also a myth to think that that every child has had that opportunity too. You know, that's sure. really as teachers what we need to do and we need to make sure and sure for every child that they have that opportunity and if they are learning with us, it's so much more fun. You know, we're doing it together and 
and their enthusiasm is contagious and we can bring our enthusiasm to them and it's changing so much that even if you have a child who grew up with a lot of that it's changing for them right now too it's so it's so rapid the development and I think uh, rather than feel outdated yourself you have to understand that you're right there as a traveler along with everyone else on the road so the students can can understand that you're learning along with them mm -hmm. so and they'll tell you if they know it. Oh, they, they'll, do they teach you a few oh, things? Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. Oh, sure. But they, you know, they understand the tools in terms of entertainment and games playing. They don't understand the purpose and how it can serve their future and really create opportunities for them in the job market or in the world in the future. That's what we're, we're there for, to bring that perspective for them. So what are the, some of the things that you do to try to motivate your students? Because maybe that hard to reach student um, and get to them? What do you do? I really think it comes down to relevance. We have to teach to their future, not our past. And one of the things I did this year was go to uh, Toys R Us and I bought the little MIP motion activated robot. And as they're watching him run around the classroom, they are completely captivated by it. And so when I ask them to read more about what robots can do to really help the human effort, whether it's in medicine, whether it's in exploration, whether it's a safety issue, they're fascinated by that. It's not a matter of trying to engage them. It's so relevant, they feel the relevance themselves. They're there, they want to do it. And when you allow them to collaborate together and discuss it and, and build a product together, it, that feeds their need for that social interaction too and the engagement is huge. So it, 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 if it's relevant and you capture their interest, it's a lot easier. And when you see that connection, it's, you, you see the spark. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah the, the fire of desire yeah. is there and all you have to do is feed it. So what motivated you to be a teacher in the first place? Oh, well, I wanted to be a teacher back when I was 17, and the field was very saturated. My dad talked me out of it. Uh, I ended up getting a, a bachelor's degree in nursing because they came to our high school and kind of, you know, that was the age for girls to be nurses, so I did. But it didn't really ever fit me uh, at all, and so I ended up going to law school. And I practiced law for 16 years, but at some point in my life, I remembered that what I wanted to do really was be in the, the nonprofit sector and do something that really contributed and gave back to the world that had given so much to me. And, and I felt, you know, discombobulated with where I was in life. And after my father died, I thought it kind of was a time to turn the page. And I basically retired as a lawyer after 16 years and went back to get my teaching credential. And I just love telling people I'm a teacher. Mm. Is there any one teacher in your past that kind of you reflect on to say that's what I really wanted to be in the first place? Actually, I was fortunate to have lots of them, but my eighth grade teacher was just the most special woman ever, and she's she's in her close to 90s now. I still keep in touch with her. She was just an amazingly inspiring woman who reached every one of us, and we all just loved her. And I'll never forget not so much what she taught me, but how she made me feel. So if someone wants to be a teacher today, um, what are some things you would tell new teachers? You have to be willing to be a learner. You have to be committed to lifelong learning. You can't be the same teacher every year. You have to uh, want to keep up with the times. You have to look at what's happening, the transformation in society, the, the second mach machine age that uh, McAfee and the others talk about is happening. It's happening now and it's happening rapidly. And if you love that and you're excited and exhilarated by it, you're going to love teaching. And there's nothing more rewarding on a personal level than being a teacher. So what does it mean to you to be named as a teacher of the year for your district? It's a tremendous honor. It's, it's a shock. I just feel like there's so many fabulous teachers. How could you possibly pick one or two? And to have the profession recognized for for the, the work and effort and heart that we all put into it every day and the joy that it brings us, I think that's so necessary and it, it needs to happen just to inspire future teachers and, and to let kids know that the teachers they loved are loved by the world too and so it's, it's, it means everything. Mm. Well congratulations to you. Thank We're you. Glad you could be here. We're speaking with Teresa Burke who is one of two teachers of the year for the San Juan Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.